Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to this part two of uh, module five on how to maneuver around algorithms in the marketplace. So what we're going to actually be looking at now is a very, very interesting subject, uh, something that's got a lot of attention in recent, um, well, this year really, a lot of attention, the market hasn't really known about it until now, even though um, a lot of the locals and the traders, the day traders in the market have known about it for years, really been uh, talking about it, complaining about it, um, what have you. Uh, it's been it's been around for a while, but really the general public's come to, it's come to a head now and and people know about this subject of spoofing and layering. So what we're gonna actually talk about in this uh, segment is, what is spoofing and well and layering for that matter and how do we oops spot it so what is spoofing and layering and how do we spot it so just start off with, let's start off with spoofing first and foremost. So spoofing is a disruptive trading practice um, whereby the spoofer or the, that trader, whether it's high frequency, low frequency, low latency, whatever it is, he places large bids or offers um, in the market in order to manipulate the price higher or lower with the intent of actually canceling it before execution. Um, so first and foremost, it's disruptive trading practice. And well, like we said, it's manipulative. And in doing so, puts in large orders only to cancel them before execution. Okay, I'll just give you a second to digest that mentally. What does that potentially look like? I mean, if we just spoke about, let's just look at this offer right here before we play this. So we've got this offer in the market at 155.96 in the Bun futures. So potentially, if this guy is a spoofer, he could be someone with size ha having to get done. And I know we spoke about this in the front running course, and this is where it gets a little bit complicated. This is where your price action um, skills start coming into play. And it's a little bit about in instinct, uh, where the market's moving, how it's moving, uh, and where we are in regards to structure. But if we just take a look at this offer right in here. If this guy was legitimate and he's got integrity for his offer, when the market makes its way towards the offer and the best bid now becomes 155.95, so let's just say these are moved up, these are no longer here, and now this is the best offer, the best bid is here, let's say for example is 50 lots, let's say 120 lots, 300 lots, whatever. The market's now moved up, and we've got what's now trading best bid 95s, best offer 96s. He will stay there and remain there in order to get lifted. If when we get to that price and he is now the best offer and he moves away, he now cancels his order and whoever has now sold in front of him, remember we spoke about front running size, people will be selling here. There will be sellers here. If that guy now moves, the sellers are now going to feel a little bit insecure, so they'll start buying here, here, and here. And this is exactly what we'll see uh, in this price ladder video that we're going to check out. Now, let's just take a look at what that actually looks like. Just bear with me for two seconds while I load up this video. Okay. So at the minute, he's not there. He's not on the, he's not on the book yet. We're waiting for him to show up on the book. We can see we're trading 93s, doing a little bit of size there. Could 
currently trading 92s, trading 92s, bid 92s. We're seeing a little bit of an offer start to build at 96s, not necessarily him. He could uh, he could show up anywhere on the book and then move it. So we've got a bit of an offer. We know that the biggest offers are 95s, 96s, and, well, double O's really. So 700. So about 560, 700, and then 600 here. That's 60, 700, and about 600 here. There we go. He shows up at 155.97s with 1.4k lots. Now, the fact that the fact that we had 400 lots here before, 400 lots here before, means that we know that the guy is now 1k. So we had 700 lots here before, we have 400 lots here, he's moved down, he's basically 1,000 lots. So obviously when you're quoting the guy on the trading floor, in whatever situation, you'll be looking at this price ladder and saying, um, oh, hey guys, look, a 1.7k lot just showed up at 96s. You'll quote him that way because that's that's how people will see him if they haven't noticed it. But if you're actually watching the book, you knew what was there on the book before, you should know that there's a thousand lots there. That there should be at least a thousand lots there. So let's just say we're moving up now. 94s. 94s bid. About to go 95s bid sooner or later. Let's just try and speed this up a little bit. We're getting closer and closer to this offer here. But, you know, like we said, when the offer is genuine, we always seem to see if the offer, if the offer is genuine, well, what do we expect to see him stay still? And if traded into with size, does not move. Very important. So as soon as someone trades into him, does he move? Does he budge at all? So we're still trading below him. Now anticipate that below here, we're trading at the highs of the day. He's at the high of the day. There's going to be people selling in 95s, selling in 94s ahead of this guy. Let's just see what happens when he starts and we start getting a little bit closer to the big offer. Currently trading 94s, just gone bid on 31 lots. 89 contractors traded into 95s and he's he's disappeared. Now expect everyone that's gotten short at 95s and 94s start bidding the market up. Whatever liquidity was left at 96 and 97s has been gobbled and they're taking these prices out quick. So if we just picture this, um, you know, he's he's basically, it's like someone telling you you've got, you know, you've got a floor beneath you or a ceiling above you and you keep jumping towards that ceiling or or let's say holding up the ceiling, holding up against the ceiling and someone just pulls the ceiling away. Um, you know, you, if you jump up, you'll you'll go through the area where that ceiling was. Um, or conversely, if that was on the bid, you know, we start, we sometimes say or use the expression, pull the rug. Well, when we say pull the rug is because literally it's like, you know, people that are, if you've got a rug, let's say you've got this magic carpet and this little stick figure standing on the, on the rug. If you pull the rug from underneath the guy, you know, he's, he's going to fall over. And we just use this expression. When someone's spoofing, he pulls the rug and the market then gets caught off balance. That's essentially how you can think of it. But I'm just giving this a bit of a mnemonic so you can remember how this actually works and, and why it works the way it works. Um, now, the intent of this the trader is unknown. We don't actually know why he was spoofing. We don't actually understand... Uh, what he's doing unless we were looking at the market structure but i'm just showing you plainly what it looks like on the actual uh, ladder the guy came in so we said 
very clearly. Big offer. At 97s, 96s of 1.6K with 1K being the bulk of size. We know that 1K order moved down from 97s to 96s. And as soon as it's best, it becomes the best offer. He gets pull, it gets pulled. Now that is the difference between what we learned in the previous module where we've got a genuine bidder offer. The market comes to that genuine bidder offer, trades into him, and he does not budge, and the market now can move away from it because it's like there's a big order in the market. We want to steer away. It starts steering away from it, um, either to make it pay down or pay up, whatever the case may be. But that's just a pure example of what we could see in a, in a spoofing type situation. In the next video, we're going to look at a very specific type of spoofing um, um, and what, and what it, it could actually do and how it's used. Um, I don't have an example here right now of, of any layering, but just to define layering, because I haven't actually gone through that. So if we had to define layering, layering is exactly... It's, it's basically spoofing, but over multiple prices. So it's spoofing over multiple prices. And what you would see instead uh, in that very same scenario, for example, that we just saw at 96 is instead of being just 1.6K here, we probably have another 1.5K, another 1.6K. Um, and usually with layering, it actually actively moves the market uh, and, it, and it'll tend to uh, try and actively move it. So if let's say someone came in with 1.56, 1.5, 1.6, 2K here, and the market started moving away, he'll start layering, you know, even, you know, even lower, he'll start moving these offers down and start layering the market lower and lower. It's, it's, just basically giving a false impression of more supply or more demand. Uh, and it just drives, it basically drives the market in direction. And it's in most cases, um, you know, if they're not genuine, these orders, it's manipulative. They're trying to manipulate the market into a certain direction into their, into their bids or into their offers. That's kind of what they will try and get out of this. And that's what actually we're going to look at in the next video. We'll actually look at specific type of spoofing called market flipping. Uh, so, Thanks a lot. Stay tuned for the next one.